Hi guys, welcome back to the build. Bank holiday Monday, so it's Monday the 28th of December. And all I'm doing is going along and counterbattening these floor joists. I've done quite a lot of them. I had done a few of them before Christmas actually, but the reason I'm having to do this is when the, when the door was installed, I wasn't entirely sure what the height of this lip was going to be compared with the floor joists and all the rest of it. But anyway, I, I wanted to make this distance up between here and here because I don't want to have a big lip. I don't want to have a big step. It's just out of choice and aesthetic. It's not structural or anything. It's, it's purely out of choice. So I worked out the distance and then I worked out what, I, what sizes I need to be able to make this distance up. I have a 22 millimeter chipboard floor, which has the uh, underfloor heating system included in it, actually. I'm gonna be doing a review of it. it I, this isn't sponsored by them. This is just something that I have bought, but it's a company called Continal and they do an underfloor heating system called the One Board. And it is literally one board where your floorboards and your underfloor heating are all included in the same system, same pack. So I'm using that. That's 22 millimeters. And then for the structural strength, because so much of the underfloor heating pipe, you know, you've got 15 mil of pipe or something in there as well. What they ask you to do is then stick six millimeters of ply on top of it. So I know that I've got 22 mil of chipboard flooring plus six mil of ply plus another four mil of Candine or whatever it is. We're going for a luxury vinyl tile. So it's between three and five mil, so four, four mil. And so that plus this batten here makes up the distance, makes up the difference quite nicely actually. So yeah, I'm going along and I'm basically just screwing it in, you know, every kind of 600 mil or something like that. And then I'll be able to start putting in noggins and insulation. Right, I've done most of it. What you may have seen on the time lapse, I don't know, but I'm staggering the joints. Doesn't matter about tiny little gaps, there's gonna be loads of thick flooring on top of it, so that's fine. But I'm staggering the joints just to try and reduce any squeak. I just need to move these bits over here before I can then carry on over there. So uh, that's fine. I originally tried packing it out with these three by twos, but they were too high. So I'm getting rid of those. Getting them stacked up. Just got my helpers arriving now. Got one on cleanup duty. One uh, inspecting the strength of the floor. Another one inspecting my work. I'm a couple of bundles short to finish this section. I'm also going to be putting them in between as well. And I also I want a nice even level floor throughout up here. So once I've built that bit, I'll batten that out. And also leading this way into the utility room so I'll be battening that out so I'm going to get four more bundles of batten maybe three and then I can put it in between as well it is time to start putting the noggins in the floor we almost we just need to insulate some of these pipes that are coming across under here and once that is done we are going to be in a really good position to start nogging out just going to be making some space uh, because I'm so what I've done is I've set up this it's connected to that it's noisy and it's not particularly nice so I've actually got headphones that I plug into my phone and I basically just kind of you know plug into the matrix and kind of shut out the world while I get on with kind of monotonous boring tasks like this so I'm going to be filming the time lapse on that one there so you'll see that in a second I made my life a little bit harder for myself than I had to. I was so excited about putting these noggins in that I forgot a fairly crucial step that I had decided to implement, which was to put a counter batten along here. I'm, I'm gonna screw it from the top. I'm gonna lift it up like this. I'm gonna screw it from in here, go down to hold this batten in place. And that's basically just gonna stop the insulation from falling down. That there, plus the edges here, nice and tight, should stop even if it, uh, it's not, it shouldn't tilt out or anything. I'm gonna cut them nice and tight and wedge them in. Any gaps I'll fill with expanding foam, but this this just stops any chance of it just sliding down if, you know, if it's, I'm hoping for piston fit, but it's, it's, it's PIR, isn't it? So it's miserable. But I've done that all the way along and it was a bit of a faff because I'd put these cross patterns in. 
I've done it now over this side a little bit as well. I'm going to make sure I cover the gaps here, but I've done it the whole way along. And again, I'm going to basically just carry on running these. So I've got one, two, three of these counter battens just to catch the PIR and stop any, stop any chance of it falling down. All right, I'm going to crack on back to the time lapse. That is all of the noggins done. Great. Thankfully, nice solid noggins. It's it, I have to say it has really made this floor very, very solid now. Really, really strong. There's, it, I can't feel any flex in it. We're going to walk back and forth across it this way and just watch each other and see if there's any flex. But as far as I can see, that is um, that's done. Getting ready to start cutting and installing this insulation in between the floorboards. This is 165. The structural engineer only specified 100, or maybe 120, I can't remember. I'll, I'll put it up on the screen here and you'll be able to see what was specified. But I have a whole load of this 165 left over from the roof. The deeper the better, frankly. And I've got eight inches of depth plus 19 mil of batten on top. So I'm gonna start getting this cut in between. So I'll be cutting lengthways and slotting them in it may well be, I just need to extend that one a little bit. It may well be that we end up with a bit of bit of extra waste here, but to be honest, I've got so much of the stuff out there uh, that I don't really mind too much. I'd rather cut them in full sheets rather than having to uh, wedge and pack things out and all the rest of it. So we'll see, we'll see how that goes. We've started lagging these pipes, gonna do a little bit more, tidy them up a bit. All along here is gonna get done as well. Gas pipes like this don't need lagging. The reason you can't put gas in plastic is because it corrodes it. I didn't realize that, but the plumber told me. The chemicals in the, in the gas make it super brittle and end up either corroding it or cracking it over time, whereas copper's fine and it doesn't need insulating. Actually, this isn't ever really gonna be live because we're going for an electric hob, but we've run it here because it's just kind of prudent to have it in case we wanted to switch to gas at some point in the future. Oh, as well as putting these noggins in, I have put a few of these wedges in, sat on DPM. So I've put six in these overall. I've got two here, two further into the middle, and then two further at the end there, just to take a little bit of the flex out. There was a little bit of flex, not too much, but just a fraction. And because I am a little bit anal, I am hoovering the floor out everywhere as well before I put the insulation in. I don't mind insulation dust. I don't actually even mind brick dust because they're both inert but we have been chopping a lot of timber on here and I, I really, I just, I don't want wood lice getting under here or any sort of bug. So all organic matter is getting hoovered out and if brick dust goes with it, then so be it. But I'm just a little bit kind of anal about that because I've seen what uh, wood lice can do. In fact, on the porch rip out video, which you may have seen, if not, I think it'll, there'll be a link to that up here. There were wood lice in the roof of the porch where it had rotted and they'd crawled their way up to the very roof and found their way in. So they don't care where it is, they will they will find it. So yeah, all the timber and organic matter and everything is coming out and the insulation will go down. Finally cutting this miserable stuff and fitting it in. I spoke with the electrician about the cables there near the insulation. He said, because it's only there for such a short amount of time for the, basically the depth of the installation and then it's running underneath. He said it's absolutely fine, no problem at all with any resistance changes or anything like that. So that's fine. Little gaps here where I've cut on the wonk a bit, we're gonna be filling with expanding foam. It's so cold at the minute that the expanding foam won't come out. So I'm just heating it up on the radiator and then I'll get those filled up. One down, a bazillion to go. I didn't film the process cause frankly, I hate it. I really hate this stuff and you can see all the crap flying around in the air. And also you've seen me cut PIR and install it before. This isn't anything new. A couple of them we've had to do joints in the middle, which we've sat on the batten there, right in the middle. So you can see like that. Some of them we had enough for it to run long in one full sheet. Got to wedge and do a bit of expanding foam in there where we need to cut out for the cables. We're starting on this side because this side, frankly, is the hardest side. There's a lot of cabling and pipes and all the rest of it running around here. And I figure it's, it's easier in the long run to do the hardest stuff first, get it out of the way. And then everything else feels a little bit easier. So this is one evening's work. It's now 
half past 10 and we started at around nine o'clock. So an hour and a half, not a lot done, to be honest. But it's a start. We've probably got to do this another five times, I reckon. This was two whole sheets of insulation plus a little bit extra. So we've got random off cuts and bits there. We're going to be bringing some more in now to leave in because it was snowing yesterday. So it's a little bit damp. It's due to rain tomorrow. And I don't really want to put this stuff in the house wet. So uh, we're going to bring it in. We've got a big towel over there to dry it off. And then we can put some more in tomorrow evening. Right, so we have switched sides. I started over on this side over here. The reason I've switched over here is because these are the last two sheets that we have basically four sheets of this 165 stuff left over and I want to be quite strategic about where I place it. The, the stuff I've got left over which is out there is 125 and this 165 was left over so obviously this is just way better. The whole floor is getting covered with underfloor heating but I'm still I'm anal so I'm thinking about it all so over here we've got a nice sitting area and then we're going to prioritize this section across here because this is potentially the coldest part being close to the doors so we'll have the most insulation under there and that was just where we started then we'll prioritize this midsection here and then we'll do over there all of it's going to have underfloor heating as i say so it's not a problem and when we switch from the 165 we're going to be switching to 125 which is still 25 mil more than was specified so we're in good shape, but basically what we're going to do now is we're going to kind of intersperse this flooring PIR with actually bringing some of the boards in and letting them kind of sit and acclimatize in the room before we then actually formally glue and screw them down. So we're going to grab some of those now, put them down, lay them down, see what they look like. It gives us something to walk on and it gets them in from the outside where it's more rainy and, you know, not ideal for chipboard basically. I know that for you this is just one long video, but for me it's another evening of indentured servitude. A slave to extra therm. But we're making good progress, to be fair. We're making good progress. So we've got all the way up to here, and we will carry on across there. We're getting there. We are slowly getting there. We've left that there because we need to get in and out of the house. We have chickens, so it's sort out of food and water for them. So and tomorrow we'll probably start getting a little bit of this flooring down and I'll talk you through what we're doing with this flooring either in this video or in a separate video. I've been kind of a bit fastidious about having a flush finish at the end and this is some of the floor that we're probably going to be going for. This is a Candine product and this is the loose lay stuff. So this stuff's actually really clever. You can literally just lay it down on a surface and then it kind of has this grippy backing to it and it holds itself, it is it's surprisingly grippy. And then when it's all laid down together, it just holds itself. And then if you ever have any problems with one, you can kind of get a suction cup and peel it back and just lift it out and then replace it. So you don't have to glue it, it doesn't have tongue and groove, it's still waterproof and everything. Anyway, I, I have been very keen to have this as a flush finish with this height here. And when this is all kind of compressed down and pushed, down there is a little bit of a lip still because on on top of this it needs to go six millimeters of plywood so we've got a seven mil headroom six mil ply and then this so we will be literally coming up to around here which means we're going to have a really nice flush finish with this so i'm really really pleased about how we've managed to get the levels up but also it means that we've got a really good strength back down here as well so this this floor is going to be insanely rigid and strong having a big sheet of osb which i will glue and then screw down to all of the joists plus 22 mil of that plus six mil of ply plus the four mil four and a half mil of candine on top there it's going to be a very very strong rigid floor and also by having this what i can then do is i can glue and screw behind here and it doesn't really matter if i hit a joist or not because I've got you know say one inch screws going through 22 mil plus six mil actually I'd need slightly longer than an inch then wouldn't I because I'd then be going into the 11 mil OSB as well so super strong super rigid it also gives us something nice and sturdy and easy to walk on now so what we're probably going to start doing is getting some of these sheets laying them down making sure there's a, a, a space and a gap around it effectively this whole place is going to be one big plywood box for a short period of time which will look a bit funny really. That's the task for this evening, I think, is probably to get a bit more of this down. Gives us somewhere to stand on, walk on, 
gives the kids somewhere because the kids do like to come out here and although it's not ideal having them out here I'd rather have somewhere safe for them than not so yeah that's the that's the makeup of the floor other than the six mil skin apply which is going to go on top of there it is another Saturday which means I have time during daylight to do some work and I am determined to finish this blasted floor today certainly all the insulation we're down to the 125 mil now we used up all of the 165 mil there's this left which I'm going to try and piece together in this little thin one here because I reckon I can it's a bit annoying like I used it as efficiently as I possibly could and there's still all of these different offcuts I mean they are thin you know they are thin little offcuts but I'm not wasting my life trying to patchwork quilt them together uh, under here it's just not worth it so using full sheets now of this stuff uh, quick question does anyone have any tips or techniques for getting rid of this stuff because obviously it's bulky and it's actually really quite rigid and hard as the name suggests so it takes up a ton of space in the skip which is ultra inefficient yeah if anyone else has any thoughts or tips about how to get rid of that stuff what to do with it I'm, I'm all ears please do post a comment in the comments below anyway i'm going to stick you on a time lapse now it'll only be quick i'm not going to take ages over this but i've got to get got to get this in got to get it done now That didn't take especially long. Nice to have that done. I, I fill in with expanding foam around the little gaps that are left occasionally. And actually, it's quite a good method for two reasons. One, it acts like glue and it kind of permeates through and sticks it and holds it in place. And obviously, it also closes up the gaps as well. Cut around here. This is quite neat, I thought. I was quite pleased with that. Nice and, nice and snug there. I put a little put a curve on the back of it because those pipes, they curve up there. So that's good. Make sure the cables are out, obviously. So now I've got a little section here to do, and then I've got all of that, and all of that to do. Yeesh. So I had a bit of a, well, logistical issue. All the OSB that I need is stacked behind 85,000 tons of chipboard floor in there. What I'm actually gonna start doing is using it by pulling it over, notching out around the opening there so it's nice and flush leaving a little bit of a space here you don't need quite as much expansion gap this way as you do this way to be honest i don't really know why you need any expansion gap on something like osb or chipboard i have never ever in my life seen or heard of or experienced the case where the chipboard expands and buckles i've had it with oak wood flooring and sol solid wood flooring i've never seen it with engineered flooring and i've never seen it with like osb or ply or anything like that so post a comment below please if you have or if you know why they say it is it just safety belt and braces i i, I don't know anyway i i do tend to leave a gap as you can see but then who knows whatever i'm gonna start gluing and screwing this down basically which is nice, nice stage to be at. Getting there with this. There's a little step on here because I had to step it in to that. And I made a classic mistake, right? I marked which part was going in and then I cut off that part rather than cutting off this part. So I then had to cut off more the whole way along and shunt the whole thing in. And then I didn't want to be cutting every single board down. So I've basically just left it as a little step on here instead and i'll make that up uh, with the next board that i put down so that's fine that little board was damaged so i cut the damage out and i've left enough space there it's not ideal but not the end of the world so this is all getting on now it's all going going down and then i can start putting this stuff down later i'm going to call it a day it's kind of late afternoon on saturday now so i'm basically just going to stop but we are getting there I've got some more OSB being delivered so I can finish insulating here. That'll be another whole sheet. And then I can carry on with the OSB along there. So I've got the insulation there ready to go down. And then those boards can start 
going on top, being glued and screwed. I'm using this, rather than using a bottle of glue, which you then destroy your forearms squeezing out, I'm using this. It's a five minute, five minute polyurethane glue. It's actually really good. I'm really, really imp impressed with it. So it's polyurethane and it goes off in five minutes. It's like a gel, wood glue, used internally and externally, all types of kind of wood. And you can use it on foam as well and, and glass wool and stuff. I mean, you can basically use it on, on anything. It's really good quality. I got it off eBay. I basically bought a box of them and it was cheap, cheaper and quicker and easier that way. And use it with this. It's a really nice way of applying it evenly. So that's great. We're getting there. We are getting there. Leaving this expansion gap for whatever reason that is. Slowly but surely getting there. Laying these boards down, these kind of flow through through here and they're going to be flowing into there a bit more as well. We're going to OSB over the whole thing. This area is going to be carpeted, which will then bring the level up. Once, once everything's at the same OSB level, having the carpet on this side will bring up and help bridge between the kind of Candine floor here on this side and the carpet on that side. So this is now finished all of the insulation in here. Right? We've still got a little bit of pipe work to do and a bit of plumbing to kind of catch up with in here. Nick's going to be coming back in the next day or so so we can get that cleaned up, get that closed up. But you can see I've started putting some boards across here. There's one more to do once we have put that pipe in. There's, uh, that's in a different video, but I can put one more board across there just to give a bit of support to the floorboards that are going to go down over there. But this is, this is going down nicely, covers a big area quickly, which is really nice. I'm kind of cutting round things. You know, this, this wall is going to have dot and dab plasterboard kind of coming down like that. So all of this will get hidden and you'll never actually stand on that point there anyway, but it is supported. You can see there are screws in there. So we are almost finished with the subfloor to the subfloor. I got my measurements completely wrong there. It's Friday night and it's half past nine. And what I did is I butted this up to these wires here drew around, measured, and then didn't account for the fact that the board was going to be going up to there. So I've cocked that up. Anyway, it, it actually doesn't matter. As with all of this, this is not the finished floor. This is the subfloor to the subfloor. Going to be adding some additional screws in. We've used all of the screws. We've got some more arriving tomorrow. But by adding a few more screws in, that will stop. That will take care of that creek. I don't want to leave any creaks under the floor. And then I will be doing a literal walk around foot by foot like this. Up and down almost the whole thing to check for creaks. And I can fill this strip in, careful of the gas pipe. And then the subfloor to the subfloor will be finished. Which would be really nice. Looking forward to having that done. Because I absolutely hate cutting OSB. There are a few things in this game that annoy me. Getting wood chips from OSB in your hair, face, eyes, nose, regardless of how much dust extraction you use. Like I use this thing, you can see I wear goggles and I use this and the wood chips still get me in the face. It's absurdly noisy and ridiculously dangerous in my opinion, those circular saws because they're so powerful. That and the sound of a drill or an impact driver running badly over the head of a screw because the person's not holding the drill right. That That's the other thing that I can't, oh, I just can't bear that. Those two things, I think, are probably the worst things about this. Oh, that and cutting PIR. This hasn't been my favourite part of the job, uh, I'll be honest. I am looking forward to getting this, this flooring down.